Raise your hand if you agree with fans that Mateo's hotel room was a disaster. <laughs> Walking here before we even got here, I said this is what we're going to be talking about. <laughs> it was actually Nothing. better. It's like, it, 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 me because you being knew worse. Was yeah. Coming, no? yeah, you exactly. tidied up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You saw the tidied up version. We were like, guys, and they, they were like, no, we love this. And I was like, okay, if you love it, I love it. <laughs> get this reunion party started. Welcome everyone to the Breakpoint Reunion. My name is Blair Henley and today I'm joined by some of the stars of the show. First up, he and his ankle of steel won a first ATP Masters 1000 title right here at the BNP Paribas Open last year, Taylor Fritz. Bravo Taylor. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for talking about you. <laughs> He is a Grand Slam finalist and has the cutest grandparents of all time, Matteo Berrettini. That's true. That's true. The second one. Matteo, how do your grandparents feel about being breakout stars? Uh, happy, I would say. My grandma couldn't believe it, but yeah, they are. Yeah, my my grand. I'm not sure if my grandpa watched it. Uh, he's not really into Netflix and stuff. My grandma for sure. Okay. But my grandpa is like a character. I don't know. Love it. All right, she's the top Spanish woman on the WTA tour and the champion of couples TikToks, Paula Badosa. <laughs> True. Paula, any updates on Ring Watch? Not yet, I'm still waiting. Okay, good yeah. to know. Good to know. Maybe we'll excited. check in next time. <laughs> I got excited for a second. I was like, it's going to happen right here. He's going to come out come the corner. Yes, please, Maria. I need pressure from you guys okay. to him. Good to know. He is the top player in his country's history, and today he decided to go no headband. Casper Ruud. <laughs> All right, he's a top 10 player and the best big brother ever, Felix Auger Aliassime. Oh. <laughs> Did Malika like that she got a little screen time? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Still up in the she air. wasn't sure. Like, yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. She reached last year's final in the desert and without a doubt has a better gym montage than all of you. No, Maria Sacre. Hundred percent. It should be all of us in an arm wrestle. Yeah. All right, you guys, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into some of the things that got you all talking, but we're gonna start nice and easy. Are we ready? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Yep. Raise your hand if you agree with fans that Mateo's hotel room was a disaster. <laughs> Walking here before we even got here, I said this is what we're going to be talking about. <laughs> it was actually Nothing. better. It's like, better. It, 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 I mean, because it could have been worse. Yeah. Yeah. Coming, no? yeah, you exactly. tidied up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You saw the tidied up version. We were like, guys, and they, they were like, no, we love this. And I was like, okay, if you love it, I love it. <laughs> that was embarrassing, yeah. All right. Raise your hand if you drink more coffee than Maria, which per the show was six espressos by the afternoon. Do you think I'm the, <laughs> I'm the player that drinks the most coffees on 100%. the tour? I'm similar, but not that much, yeah, but it was crazy. I, I told you yesterday. Now I, I understand her energy. Them. Yes, there have been developments in the coffee yeah, addiction. I've reduced them to four. Mm -hmm. And I don't drink coffee after 2 or 3 p.m. Ground rules. Yeah. Progress. Congratulations. How many, how many espresso until you test positive to, like, caffeine? Oh. <laughs> it's like 30 or what? <laughs> All right. Raise your hand if something shown in your respective episodes made you cringe. Sure, I would love to know, Casper. I don't like watching myself on TV in general, so... Yeah, like, yeah. Me too. Yeah. Like, I, I, actually, I'm watching, like, yeah. kind of like, oh, what did I say, yeah. you know? Why did I say that, yeah. But I think you came across really well. Thanks. Yeah. There you go. Pat on the back, Casper. In part one of Breakpoint, we got a look behind the scenes before, during, and after the matches. And much like Rafa's theme music, it was intense. Let me just go out and try. That's all I'm asking. Okay, so I'll so, pull the plug if it's not there. Yep. Do you want to go out there with 17,000 people? Why well, pull the plug? I feel like it's better than not going out there. No, at all. not at all. It's totally. I feel be, like you I be feel like I can give it. I feel like I'm good enough right now to give it a shot against him in this win. What? Taylor, I want to start with you. It was one year ago here in Indian Wells when you overrode your entire team, multiple medical professionals, and decided to play the final against Rafa. So looking back, watching it back, was it brilliant or stupid? With the well, looking when you yeah, I mean when you look back when you look back at it like in hindsight, it was the right it was the right decision because I mean not only like obviously playing the match and, and then winning, but 
we were obviously worried about what could happen going forward. It turned out to not be that serious. You know, they, we didn't have time to run x-rays, MRIs and stuff before the match, so we didn't know. But um, what it ended up being was just like a pinched kind of, almost like a pinched nerve, like inflamed in my ankle from like something I did in the match before. And so it got better in like a week or so and I was able to play. Was, you know, in hindsight, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad and I was, you know, able to play if I could play through it. So yeah, because then really you played like Miami after. Yeah. When I watched, I was like, how the hell yeah, did you play yeah, Miami after? No, I, like, yeah, my, it was, my ankle was like clicking every time I served in Miami, but like I, it wasn't really like hurting. I was oh, fine. Okay. Power of confidence. The power of confidence. There you go. And, and on that note, the, perhaps the most important question for you, Taylor, did you think you avoided coming off like a cocky You're going to make me look like a, like a cocky <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think so. I, I think so. I think the thing is, there's so many different I think clips too, where I'm like messing around with my team and like saying stuff that like you could put in there, and like you can always cut things a certain way. But like, I yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm happy with I'm happy with my parts in the show. All right, good stuff. Well, Maria, your episode, of course, also centered around the action here in Indian Wells. You described your coach, Tom Hill, as your best friend. We also saw some pretty heated exchanges uh, from the court. You on the court, him in the players box. <laughs> What might fans not know about the player team dynamic? I mean, we get to spend so much time with them and sometimes you don't want to see their faces anymore. And it's just, uh, <laughs> I mean, I see my team more than I see my family. Um, obviously, I have a great relationship with Tom, but at the same time, when you, you spend so much time with each other, then it gets to a point where you just feel like, um, you know, I don't know how to describe it, but it's just you know, we all love him. We all know, like, we all know how it yeah, feels. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and so you guys agree yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, you spend yeah. so much time with these people. Yeah, so it's, it's not like, easy. <laughs> you know, it's like sometimes you like one day you just like anything they say is like you you you're like you're taking it the wrong way. You yes. know, <laughs> for no reason though. Like it's just <laughs> sometimes you want to hear it, sometimes you don't. I don't know. Sometimes I do feel bad with the way I speak to him, so I apologize. Um, That's important. Yeah, but uh, he knows I'm, a, I think, a good person, <laughs> so he doesn't take it personally. Yeah. All right, good stuff. I, guys, I want to shift to clay season. A couple of the most talked about moments in Breakpoint, Felix and Casper, were it was the time that you spent with Rafa Nadal in the Philippe Chatrier tunnel when he was going through his warm-up routine. Him jumping around, warming up, you know, running up and down next to you. It does turn up the intensity. On social media, it was likened to being in a cage with a great white shark. So, Casper, I want to start with you. What was going through your mind in that moment, seeing Rafa out of your peripheral vision? Well, I mean, I've seen it hundreds of times before, so it wasn't really a surprise. And, you know, people saying that, you know, I already lost the match um, before even going on court. Might be true, but, you know, if I had won, it would be like, you know, Casper won because he stayed cool would be like opposite, you know, like you can turn it around wherever, however you want to turn it around. So, I mean, uh, that's his routine. What, you know, the cameras didn't show. We were both 30 minutes in the gym, warming up, running and doing everything. So I was sweating under my sweater and ready to go. So, I mean, I, I knew it was going to happen and I knew it was going to, he was going to pull it out or do it, but it didn't really uh, make a difference if I, if I can say, I mean, um, Obviously, he killed me and destroyed me, but I don't think it was because of. Uh, I don't think it was because he did those steps in the locker room. Yeah, it huh? wasn't because of his two minute quick yeah, was, feet before you. I don't think it was room. because of that, you know, to put it this way. So um, people might think that, but I, I don't think that. So I don't know. Anything to add, Felix? Yeah, it does come out like dramatic on the screen. It's kind of good, but I remember being there, being there and I was like, ooh, like this is good. Like I was like, the last minute and I like seemed like running up and down. I was like, it was like that last extra like percentage of like intensity like right before so coming out on court on that was half like, of production you were thinking this well is, I was this just thinking I was like this is gonna be good like <laughs> <laughs> like thinking like yeah because I'm just standing there and he's like and it was kind of just yeah these the two players about to go on court and and he brings a lot of intensity and and I think yeah for the show it really came out came out good and that's how you feel you're like also for us like we're young and seeing Rafa all these years play there and like you're about to go and play him like on center court, it's, uh, it's special. That's why it was also like for me, I was like, oh, this is, this is nice, yeah, this is good. 
Obviously, you guys have seen Rafa's routine, as you said, Casper, some of you more in bits and pieces, but seeing it from that bird's eye view, did any of you think, maybe I should adopt a more intimidating pre-match routine? Because it did seem like it could have a psychological effect. You could argue the other way. It's also very intimidating to do absolutely nothing and be super calm and just like, yeah. I like just, I got this. Like, I don't need to do all this extra stuff. No, the so question is, like, he does it for us or he does it for yeah. himself? Yeah, yeah. So that's the thing. I think he does yeah. it for himself. Uh, Everyone has their own process. Yeah, I think for himself first. Okay. I don't think he tries to scare us, right? I, I mean, yeah, I would think hopefully. so as well. But <laughs> then when he was, I think everybody, everybody just has their own thing. There's yeah. not like a right or wrong way to do it. Like, but then when he was it, doing it, I was yeah. like, is he? I was like, is he doing that on purpose a little bit? Like trying to, like. I think his match record of one of five to three in it's Roland Garros okay, is intimidating <laughs> enough as it is. So I don't think he needs <laughs> the last yeah. two yeah. minutes. <laughs> All right, that settles it. We're going to shift gears with a fan question from Thea Leticia. Oh. How was it for you to experience the emotions you have on tour while also being filmed? That's a question for anyone. Actually, Matteo, I'm, I want to start with you. <laughs> okay. Um, obviously, at the beginning when we decided to do it, uh, I think all of us, uh, we were like excited, but we didn't know what to expect. So personally, I decided to to be real, to be honest, and you know, give the cameras and every, like everything that I had, uh, my thoughts, my fears, my good moments. Unfortunately, last last year there were a lot of bad moments as well. But I think it's, this is cool, so people can understand, you know, like what what's behind the scenes. What we hit tennis balls, but that's not all we do. So I think it was was tough. It is still tough, like to actually show the world, you know, like who you are. But it's the only way to be honest and to be real, I think, to the cameras. Paola, you've been honest about your mental health in the past. It was no different on the show. I've been struggling for years with a lot of depression. Yo cuando estoy bien, yo en esas pistas me siento como en mi casa. Y yo me voy a sentir aquí y esto esto es mi sitio. Claro, yo paso de eso a esto sacarme de aquí que es me quiero morir. Pau, esto que estás comentando. Igual, la próxima vez, lo que tenemos que hacer es parar. What was the fan reaction like to that? Um, I think it was pretty good, but as Mateo said, I mean, I tried to be um, very honest, to express myself, the fears that I, that I had and have. Um, and yeah, I mean, we hit balls, but I think it's much more, like the 90% uh, on and off court, it's so many things, this sport, it's so mental. So yeah, I just wanted to like maybe normalize this situation a little bit more and if people like it's watching that, that they can feel like, yeah, I'm having the same uh, as, a as a tennis professional and yeah, the same thing. So yeah, I'm always pretty open on that as well. Maria, we saw some emotional moments from you here in Indian Wells. How hard was it to be that vulnerable on camera? I know I don't like to cry in front of people. What was that like for you knowing that there were cameras capturing it? I mean, I wasn't really thinking at that moment that, you know, uh, they were filming. It was just, um, you know, I was just trying, not trying. I was being, you know, I was not really caring about what was around me. I just wanted to live the moment. And, you know, as, as everyone said, um, I've been more honest to the crew than I've been, you know, to uh, many people around me. I've said more things of how I feel to them just because, um, if we do it, I have to do it the right way. So I just wanted to be, um, as they already said, honest and, and myself. Whether it was Mateo FaceTiming his grandparents or Paula and Juan giving us couples envy, Breakpoint pulled back the curtain on some of the players' most personal relationships. I think a lot of people that see me on social media, on Instagram, they think that my life and everything is perfect. But uh, of course it's not. I'm living a dream. But at the same time, it's not easy to manage with all the expectations, all the pressure. You all know as tennis players that there has to be an element of selfishness. Does it take a special person to walk alongside you through this tour life? Paula, I want to start with you on that one as well. I mean, of course, I mean, um, I have my team by my side and of course, you have to be selfish a, a lot of times in an individual sport, but um, I have like, for example, my, my boyfriend is always by my side and he supports me no matter what. So I think that's more, uh, very important in a very lonely sport, like the, the sport we play, I think that's uh, helpful for me. 
Taylor, you said that you didn't think you'd be here without the support of, of Morgan. What is she doing behind the scenes that help you be your best? Uh, I mean, it, it's it's a lot of different things. Like Paula said, it's like we have it's a selfish sport, and you have to be selfish. Well, when a tournament's going on, it's like we go to sleep when I need to go to sleep. We eat what I feel like I need to eat to play better and stuff like that. And then I think she just pushes me a lot to stay uh, like disciplined to go to sleep at the right times, to, to eat the right things. And like, it's more just like, uh, I don't know, just holding me like accountable because she actually cares about, you know, how I'm doing and, and my success. So I think that's, that's a really important thing is having someone that I guess kind of just wants the best for you and shares the kind of same goals for you. So they'll, they'll also push you to, to do all the right things. Mateo, I think we can all imagine what it would be like to see a former relationship play out on screen. Did that affect this breakpoint experience for you? Um, I mean, I have to be honest, I was a little bit, you know, worried about, <laughs> not worried, but, you know, like curious also, like what they're going to show, you know, like what, what it's going to be like. And I actually liked the episode a lot. Um, there were so many fun moments, nice memories. Uh, I was laughing a lot. I remember watching the first time and <coughs> I was doing my treatment session and my physio asked me, why are you laughing so much? <laughs> I was like, uh, it's just uh, good memories, you know, like I could like see myself in that, in that moment and personally it was, was nice. And, and I think it showed who we were and yeah, that's why it was nice. The business center. It got a lot of people talking. It got a lot of people laughing. <laughs> what are your views on the business center one year later? You go downstairs and you ask for, for a room for... They're not going to give me a room for 10 minutes. No, that's exactly why they're going to give you a room, because it's 10 minutes. OK, I'm just going to do what you said. I'm going to find a business center, go downstairs. <laughs> I don't know, I want to ask them because I, we never talk about this. Okay, but, so what do you guys but think? But that's the compromise. Fair or not? I don't know. It's I think that the um, people got it the wrong way because I think that that day was not the day you played, right? Against... Um, yeah, what was, was the it? situation? I think it was a different day and they, people thought it was right before your match or something no, like that. No, I don't, I actually don't remember if it was like okay. the, the match, the match day or the the day that I played and I had to rest, but I was just like, I think you can go. I mean, any you know. day you need to sleep. Yeah, like, yeah, and I was if you like, need to sleep, if you need to sleep in, like you're, if you need to sleep in and you're playing, then like, yeah, I'm, I'm I'd be on. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I was, but it was like the vibe was really fun. Like it wasn't, we weren't arguing about that. I mean, that's what I remember. But we should ask her. I think but, people laughed about <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah, but I, I would do. I mean, I would have done the same thing. Like I would have left the room, but. I mean, it's... <laughs> With that, Paula and Taylor are going to leave us for former champion and defending champion duties here in Indy Wells. The rest of you sit tight. We have some more for you. All right. See you guys. Thanks for coming. Thanks, you guys. Maria, I'm going to start this question to you. We all watched Anz and Kareem talk about kids and the sacrifices that women make. Tell me more about babies. You, I know that you like kids, you like the babies. Yeah, I love babies, and we yeah. both do. And uh, hopefully one day we can have a inshallah we will uh, a mini Kareem or a mini Ons. I know maybe not in this part of your life, but did that resonate with you, knowing that one day you might have to make that decision? I have to say that I'm you know far away from that, but I see that you know a lot of um, women, especially you know Ons, has been married for the last seven eight years. Um, she has a you know very cute niece that she really likes to take care of her. Um, so I see how you know how some women just, you know, they're ready for it. Um, it's very tough um, for a player. I always say that I don't want to have a kid and then have to come back. Uh, I think it's, uh, I really admire the girls that they do that because it takes, you know, um, some serious work, you know, to lose all the weight, um, you know, to get back in shape. Um, and just yet yeah, the travel after that. Do you take your kid with you? Do you just, you know, leave it at home with your mom or your parents or whoever that is? I think it's a very difficult decision. Um, that's why I've been, you know, I heard a lot of girls that, you know, they, they want to play for a few more years and then just, you know, maybe have a family and then they perhaps not come back. It's hard. It is very hard. It's a tough decision. Yeah, yeah for, for you guys hearing that, seeing that, 
does it give a little extra perspective knowing that you maybe don't have to consider that quite the same way? Definitely. I remember watching the episode of Aunts and thinking like, wow, that's, that's some like real life conversations and like, uh, you know, like in lo long term uh, decisions that are yeah going to affect um, your personal life, your family's life. And so I was, yeah, kind of like put things in perspective. And I remember watching that and like feeling that, yeah, in a way it's, um, it's tough decisions to make um, for, for them. All right, shifting gears a little bit. Moms, grandparents, family members love to share stories. Were any of you nervous knowing that your family members were going to be on screen? Casper, I'll start with you because obviously your dad was going to be part of it. Yeah, I, I think uh, my dad did well. He wasn't really on the screen for too long. And, uh, <laughs> That's <laughs> why he did, he did yeah. well. <laughs> um, but yeah, he, we have a great relationship. He's been, um, you know, pushing me and been my coach since I was before I have memories even. So he was a young dad. He was 26 or 27 when I was born. So he just loved taking me to any sort of sports uh, facility, tennis, soccer, golf, whatever it was. So, uh, but um, I'm not sure what the next part of Netflix is going to look like, but I do know that my grandparents also came to Turin last year. Huh? And uh, I welcomed them to, my, uh, to our hotel where we stayed and Netflix was there filming. So let's see if they, uh, Right. Managed to copy Mateo's grandparents. Some competition uh, for yeah, Mateo's competition. grandparents. So let's see. I'm not right. sure. Uh, Felix, one quick thing about yeah. your mom. Yeah. Did you prep her? Because what she said about not wanting to raise a good tennis player, but wanting to raise a good man, that was perfect. For me, I don't raise a tennis player. I raise a, a child who I expect to become a, a man with, you know, good values. I'm really proud of the man he is. No, I mean, I think it was honest. I think that's, I mean, that's usually what she says. My mom was not like, my dad was more the one uh, that was like on the tennis side, you know, in the family. And my mom was more on the education and kind of like doing other things than just tennis um, side. She did so, well, we have to say, huh? Mm. So like she, I was about to say the opposite. <laughs> she did really well. <laughs> no. So I think it's honest. I think that's how she felt as a mom. She was like, oh, because, now I'm a professional and, and yeah, she loves that I'm playing tennis, but growing up, like, I think it was more important for her that yeah, I do good in school and that I'm a good person. All right, guys. Well, we so appreciate you being here today. We're going to finish things off on a light note uh, with some breakpoint, and I use this term extremely loosely, awards. All right. All right. So I'm going to read it off. You point to the person you think it most applies to, even if it's yourself. We can also name a part one castmate that's not here today. All right, who is most likely to have a reality TV career? Well, I think I would, that's I would obvious. I say yes, Taylor. Taylor? Taylor? Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. I would have said Nick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nick. Oh, yes, yeah. I forgot yeah. about Nick. Yeah. Me too. Nick. Camera's on, you know what yeah. <laughs> Nick, <laughs> Nick might win that one. Yeah. I think so yeah. too. All right, well, we'll save his uh, certificate for him the next time we see him. All right, the next one. Who is most natural on camera? Ooh. I don't know. I feel like Felix is natural. Like, no? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's tough to judge myself. That dinner I, scene was very natural. I, Isla, I thought Isla was good too. Yeah, Isla like, was, I thought oh, Isla, Isla I feel like she likes also, like, you know, she does these things for Tennis Channel and like mm -hmm. filming her. So I don't like filming myself too much, like talking. Yeah, she's I feel like natural. she does it all the time and she's, right. I think she's pretty good. Yeah. Isla gets most natural yeah. on camera. Next, most likely to read the fan comments? Uh, no, me. Fan comments yeah. like Casper on Instagram. Says absolutely not Taylor. for him. Taylor. Taylor, yeah, maybe okay. Taylor. All right. Most likely to read the fan co fan comments goes to Taylor. Most likely to rewatch their episode ten times. Nick. 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 I think. <laughs> yeah. I think Nick. All right, Nick. Yeah. We have several awards for you next time we see you. And the last one, most likely to make friends with the camera crew. Uh. Good friends with you guys, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure, yeah. I mean, I, 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 well, I said since me, he raised was, his hand for himself first, yeah. Mateo, no, I, I have a good relationship with them. Yeah. You do, you do. It's for you guys. Thank you all for joining us today, and we hope you will join us as part two of Breakpoint premieres in June. Awesome. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. You don't want to keep it? <laughs> oh, okay, I can keep it. <laughs> I'm going to keep it's, it then. It I'm going to put it. Yeah. Wow, so proud.